This episode is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a subscription club that sends you awesome theme boxes every month filled with cool new products and brands. Members receive awesome boxes featuring top shelf goods arriving at their doorstep. Bespoke Post scours the globe to find the coolest selection of goods and gear and partner with the under the radar brands that you won't find anywhere else. Getting started with Bespoke Post is easy. You take a short quiz about what you like and what you don't like, and they pick a box based on your preferences. If you don't like what Bespoke suggests, you can swap it for another box. There are a ton of options. My box just arrived, and here are some of the products that I got this month. Here I have the Weekender bag, which has a nice heavy-duty canvas construction, reinforced with a metal frame and leather straps and handle. And here's the Turbo box. Inside there's premium coffee from the roasters at Drive Coffee Incorporated. This one, Brentwood, is rich and nutty, and this one, Aspen, is crisp and sweet with notes of Fuji Apple. Mmm, delicious. Each box is packed with at least 70 bucks worth of gear, but cost members only $45. Viewers of Simple History will get 20% off their first purchase. Just use my coupon code HISTORY20 or click the link in the description below. SS Alchemos, the cursed ship of World War II. Sometimes it's hard to separate fact from fiction, and this is very much the case when it comes to the seemingly cursed ship, the SS Alchemos. Therefore, what you're about to hear is in part a proven fact, while other parts are speculation, rumor, and possible urban myth. So, judge for yourself the mysterious tale of the cursed merchant ship of many names. The story starts in the midst of World War II, when the Nazi U-boat menace was threatening Allied shipping all across the North Atlantic. There soon emerged a desperate need to replace Allied mounting losses, especially among its merchant fleet, as quickly as possible. Out of this situation was born a whole new concept, a merchant ship that would be welded together from massive whole prefabricated sections on an assembly-style production line. This offered a quick way to manufacture at a low cost a much-needed standardized class of merchant ship. These Liberty ships were produced between 1941 to 1945, and American shipyards built a staggering 2,710 of them. The average time to complete one of these ships was incredibly just six weeks. This meant corners were cut, and quality at times was questionable. There were even instances of these ships falling apart at sea without warning. In the midst of all this production chaos on October 11, 1943, the Liberty ship the George M. Shriver, identification number 1803, was launched at the Bethlehem Fairfield shipyards in Baltimore. It's rumored that while the ship was being constructed, that a group of welders weren't accidentally sealed inside the hull crawl space during the welding process. Despite their screams for help and relentless banging on the inside of the hull, they were not discovered until the next day, by which time they had all suffocated to death. Just nine days after the ship was launched, it was assigned to the Free Norwegian Merchant Shipping Fleet and renamed the Vigo Hunstein in honor of a Norwegian civil rights lawyer who had been executed by a Nazi firing squad in 1941. The majority of those stationed on this ship were Norwegian or Canadian. The ship's primary use was to travel throughout the Mediterranean and into the Indian Ocean via the Suez Canal. Ammunition and other materials needed to create weapons were being transported. The ship soon got a reputation for being cursed, despite surviving several attacks by German aircraft and U-boats while doing convoy duties for things on board would creepily malfunction. Lights would flicker on and off for no apparent reason at all. The radio would at random times angrily hiss out static, like a soul in anguish, and the ship's engines would constantly break down. Though no good reason could ever be found why this kept happening. Many of the crew would complain that parts of the ships would get eerily cold, despite the ship starting to operate in the warmer climate of the Mediterranean Sea. Worse was to come when in May 1944 the ship was assigned near Naples, Italy, when a 28-year-old Canadian radio operator, Maud Steen, was brought aboard. Steen wanted to fight in the war, but Canada, much like other allied nations, would not allow women to fight. So she joined a Norwegian company that allowed women on ships. Within just three months of her arriving, she was shot dead by another crew member while the ship was off the coast of Italy. The motive for the crew's member's actions was never discovered, and straight after the killing he mysteriously turned the gun on himself in what seemed to be a murder-suicide. Due to the horrific state of her death, the military claimed that she died due to enemy fire, fearing the repercussions if the true nature of her death was discovered. The Vigo Hanstein would survive the war, 
as did, surprisingly, most of her fellow Liberty ships. In fact, just over 10% were actually lost during the war. Of the remaining 2,400, most of them were sold off cheaply to commercial shipping companies. Greek entrepreneurs bought a staggering 526 of them after the war, including the Vigo Hanstein in 1947. The ship was renamed yet again, this time as the SS Alkamos, which means strong in Greek. But still, her cursed reputation followed the ship around, and crew members claim they often saw terrifying ghostly apparitions when on board. The ship's reputation was so bad that many thought it was haunted, and often sailors would refuse to serve on her, being too terrified of the evil spirits they thought dwelled there. It wasn't helped when a sister ship of the SS Alchemos, the Robert Dale Owen, that had been renamed Calliope, sank. It was operated by a Greek shipping company. The ship, under its new name, had hit a mine left over from the war and had unexplainably fallen apart immediately, taking most of her crew to a watery grave. The rest of the SS Alchemos's career was plagued by bad luck. On March 20, 1963, when the SS Alchemos was off the coast of Western Australia, just north of Perth, an ungodly storm appeared out of nowhere and drove the ship onto some nearby reefs. The next day, the ship had to be towed to the nearby port of Fremantle, where some basic repairs were done to keep the ship afloat. The ship was under repairs for two months, and disagreements over who was responsible for paying for the repairs arose. Even the ship caught fire randomly while in Fremantle. Then, the plan was to tow the SS Alchemos to Hong Kong for a full overhaul. But the ship had barely made it out of harbor when her towing line mysteriously snapped and it ended up beached just a few hundred yards from the shore. Some say the storm howled in triumph and the sea applauded, having finally claimed the ship as her own. The SS Alchemos remained intact, but it was not able to float on its own. It was forced to drop anchor and the lower decks were flooded on purpose in order to stabilize the vessel so it wouldn't break up and become a danger to nearby shipping. The crew was then evacuated and a lone caretaker was placed on board. The man stayed on the ship all alone for months and months, some saying he went crazy by the isolation. He claimed that there were strange, sinister moaning that could be heard around the ship. He even reported seeing fresh blood dripping from the walls. The following year, another attempt was made to tow the ship, but this failed too. As if trying to escape, the SS Alchemos mysteriously broke its anchor chain on a clear and windless night and drifted almost suicidally onto the nearby treacherous Eglinton Rocks, as if it was trying to end its own life. For the second time, the ship caught fire randomly. The SS Alchemos was later inspected and it was deemed too heavily damaged to be repaired. By now, it was 21 years old, and this simply reinforced the decision that the ship should be scrapped. It was way beyond its lifespan as Liberty ships were originally designed to last just a mere five years. During the attempts to start the salvaging process, work had to be halted when a fierce fire suddenly appeared, forcing the workers to evacuate. Eerily, the fire started up every time they tried to reboard it. So in the end, the salvage crew refused to return to the ship, as they now believed it was cursed. Many accounts claim to have heard, seen, and smelled things while on board, even being pushed. A female caretaker fell while on board the vessel and suffered a miscarriage. By 1969, all hope had been given up in salvaging the ship, and the Navy wanted submariners to take measurements of the propeller. While on their way to the site, all three men were killed in a freak plane crash. Then a local long-distance swimmer inexplicably disappeared while training near the wreck, and his death was never solved. Many said that the ship had claimed him, as the ghost ship needed him to be one of its ghostly crew. It was even rumored his skull was later found in the engine room. Over 40 years since the SS Alchemos was abandoned to the sea, it now lies submerged just below the surface, and at every low tide, the top of her superstructure emerges once more, like a specter rising from the grave as if to mock the world that even in death, she is seemingly a ship that refuses to die.